finally, we'll look at example three. And I'm glad you stuck around to try this example because it's the one with our slant asymptote. So again, our function, it's derivative, it's second derivative. Domain restrictions, I see a denominator. Where does it equal zero? Where x equals two. So x cannot equal two. Now why? Is it an asymptote? Is it a vertical asymptote? Let's see, what does the numerator look like if we could factor it? It doesn't look like we can factor the numerator, so we do have a vertical asymptote, x equals two, because we cannot factor it out, so vertical asymptote. Do we have a horizontal asymptote? The numerator is one degree higher than the denominator. When the numerator is any degree higher than the denominator, there's no horizontal asymptote. When it's one degree higher, there is a slant asymptote. So there is a slant asymptote. How do we find it? The answer, we divide. Long division will always work. Remember what long division looks like. x minus 2 divides into x squared minus 2x plus 4. Synthetic division will always work if the divisor has a biggest term that is of degree one with a leading coefficient that is only one. So we can use synthetic division, but let's review both. x into x squared, how many times does it go? x times, x times x is x squared, and x times negative two is negative two x. Then we're gonna subtract. So subtract means change those, and that makes gone, gone, bring down the four. How many times does x go into four? None. So here's our final answer, dividing. It's x plus remainder over divisor. So instead of h of x equaling that, h of x can be written like this. A different way to write that same function. Let me show you using the synthetic division. So the synthetic division is we take the divisor and we solve it as if it's a zero. So x minus two equals zero gives us x equals two. So we make our upside down division and we put two on the outside. The leading coefficients go inside. Without skipping uh, degrees, we'll put zero in there for any that are missing. We have a one x squared, a negative two x, and four is a constant. We didn't skip any, so we don't need any zeros. Bring down the one, multiply times two, add those, multiply times two times zero, add those. So if this was x squared, what we have left after dividing out an x is x. So this is one x plus the remainder four over x minus two. Same thing we got here. Here's what this tells us. The asymptote is horizontal or slant. What is happening as x approaches infinity? So the limit as x approaches infinity of our function written like this, now we can say looks like this, infinity plus zero. Well, how is it going to infinity? At what slope is it going to infinity? At the slope of one. So this, because this part tells us it just goes to zero. The rest of it is what we want. So this tells us the slant asymptote is y equals x. It goes at a slope of one. Let's now focus on derivatives. So h prime, looking at this guy, where do we have critical numbers from, from looking at h prime? Where does h prime equal zero? That's where x equals zero or x equals four. So also, where the denominator equals zero, h prime doesn't exist, is where x equals two. So on our number line, we've got zero, two, four. Zero, two, four. Using h prime to tell us the signs, h prime is first positive, then it's negative, negative, positive. Now remember what was happening at two. This one's a vertical asymptote. Therefore, the increase, decrease, decrease, increase gives us only two relative extreme values. Here we have a relative max, and here we have a relative min. The max is at zero, we'll find what it is. The min is at four, we'll find what it is. Zero, we, oh, we forgot to do the intercepts. Oh, we'll see. Here, we're gonna do it later, because we're plugging zero in. So h of zero, plugging it into the original function, h of zero gives us negative two. And then we need to plug in four, h of four gives us six. So four, six is our relative min. I wrote four and it should be six, okay. Relative max, 
relative min. Now let's look at our second derivative. Second derivative, well, where does the second derivative equal zero? That's where the numerator equals zero, but no, that doesn't ever happen when eight equals zero, never. Where does the derivative, second derivative not exist is where x minus two cubed equals zero or where x equals two. Well, of course, that's a domain restriction. So no PPOIs, but we do have a domain restriction and we're testing h double prime h double prime before two, plug it in zero, looks like negative. After two, looks like positive. So function will be concave down, then concave up, but because of the vertical asymptote, we have no points of inflection. Let's go ahead and put all this information into our picture. Let's start with finding a good place for our axes. We can probably put the x-axis about here and the y-axis about here. And what are some points that we found earlier relative, m oh no, let's do the asymptotes first. x equals two, so x equals two is this guy. And the slant asymptote of y equals x. So starting at zero, zero, and there's our slope of one, and let's just switch those into dashed lines. There we go. And we'll continue it as much as we can. Now relative max is zero, negative two. Zero, negative two. We know that's a relative max. Make that a little bit smaller print so we can fit everything in that we need to, relative max. And relative min at four, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, relative min. Notice that the relative min is higher than the relative max because it's about the point relatively close. Now we can connect with smooth curves. So we know about the concavity concave down before the vertical asymptote, concave up after. So follow the asymptotes while you're trying to be concave down and follow the asymptotes while you're trying to be concave up. That's a min, it should be the lowest. That's a max, it should be the highest relative to the other points around it. Awesome job, keep it up.